Got a 2020 RAV4 hybrid, and we're gonna put on the Miller Cat Cat Shield. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. Got another Miller Cat Cat Shield to do, and this is on the 2020 RAV4 Hybrid. You can see this one's a little bit different. This is more of a cage or a shield around the catalytic converter. Got the car lifted up and on jack stands. As far as the tools needed, you should have protective gloves and eyewear, a 10, 12, and 17 millimeter socket, a quarter inch bit driver, a small quarter inch wrench. Ratcheting would be great if I had it, which I don't. And of course you'll need a ratchet and an extension, a small flathead screwdriver, and or a trim tool and you're also going to need a torque wrench comes with some nice instructions here you can see that this is for the RAV4 hybrid or Avenza 21 to 2023 and this is also their version 2 shield they had a previous version which is a little bit different design this one's a little bit smaller and more compact and let's just get right into it so the first thing we need to do is remove the factory heat shield and that's two 10 millimeter bolts and the two plastic clips so let's get underneath and we'll do that first here's the factory heat shield we just need to take this off it helps if you have one of these little trim remover tools They're really screws, I guess, not bolts. And this, this heat shield will come out. I'm over on the passenger side of the vehicle, by the way, and we need to remove this splash guard next. There's two bolts that hold it in place. And then the other one is recessed right here. All right, now we're not pulling this splash guard down completely. We just removed those two bolts. And then this right here is the next part that we need to take out. It's this plastic clip. Now they say you can just use a flathead screwdriver in here and unscrew this counterclockwise. Just pulling down on this splash shield while I'm unscrewing. That seems to be doing the trick. So there, we got it loose. Once you have this free or the splash shield down a little bit, you come over here. So you see right here on the splash shield, I just have it propped down with my screwdriver so I can show you. We just need to pry out these little tabs on this little white clip, and that will separate this from the black part here. They give really good instructions that show how to do this. So see this tab right here, just need to pry that out. It says to use a pick tool, but I'm just using a little flathead screwdriver, hoping that that will be enough to catch it. There we go. So you gotta pry that tab all the way out. Got it. You see how that works? These little plastic tabs right here. You just need to pry them out and then you can pull out the center part here. All right, now we need to pull out this rubber grommet. I'm just using a little flathead screwdriver. To pry that out. Okay, now we need to loosen and remove this bolt right here. This is the subframe mounting bolt that's 17 millimeter. I just have a screwdriver in here holding the splash shield down so that I've got room to work in here. That kind of limits the swing of the ratchet, but that's all right. All right, now this piece here, we can put in this little tab here at the end. That goes into the hole where we took out the rubber grommet. And then this small hole right here goes right over the bolt. Now, before I put that in, we need to use the included thread lock on all fasteners. So I'm gonna put that on the subframe bolt that we took off. Just a little bit, just on the threads here. And then we can position this just like that. And then we can put that subframe bolt back in. We are gonna to torque this later to 63 foot-pounds, but for right now, we just put it in there kind of snug. And then this stud right here, we're gonna put the M6 security nut on that, which is this right here. And I am gonna put a little bit of this thread locker in there, and then we'll get that started. Now this right here, this is the security key to tighten that, but we're not gonna tighten it completely until you have everything at least started in the right place. All right, for this next part, this is the upper half of the shield. The little tab on this side is what attaches to this bracket. So that's the proper way to put it in. But in order to get it up and around, you just kind of turn it upside down and rotate it around. Start farther back if you need to, and then slide it forward. Just had to push up a little bit on the factory heat shield in order to get that to slide all the way through. All right, now we need to put this bracket here on the front. First, we attach it to the upper part of this shield here with one of the screws provided. It also gets a washer. We're gonna put some thread lock on that first. It's gonna be going over this stud right here in the front. So we just need to make sure that we have it positioned just like this. That's where the stud's gonna go. And this is where this connects here on the side through that hole. So let's get that one started here first. 
See this stud right here? This is where the next part of this flange goes, right over the stud. You leave the nut on, and then we need to put on another fender washer and another security nut. We're just getting this started for right now. This is the smaller of the washers. This is the M6. And this one here is the M8, the larger fastener that goes into the side. I think we're ready for the bottom part of the shield here. This should have, of course, the tab here on the side. Should line up, be on the passenger side, which is gonna line up with this. It's basically gonna sandwich these three pieces together. And I'm gonna get the bolts started here on the side. All right, so the two button head fasteners or the round head fasteners are what goes on this side here. So I'm just gonna get some thread lock on those. These also get one of the M8 washers. Let's just get that loosely fitted for right now. Again, we're not gonna snug that down until we get everything lined up. The last fasteners are these right here. So let's get those ready with some thread locker. And this is actually wrong how it's sitting right now. This actually has to go underneath like so. Not hard to do, you just kinda gotta make sure that this, cause you can see that how this is countersunk and then it goes through and basically sandwiches all that together. So let's just go ahead and get these started by hand first. All right, now we're ready to tighten everything down. Now, as far as the order of torque, we need to do these ones here first, right here. Just make them good and snug, don't overdo it. All right, now the next one we need to tighten is the difficult one, which is this right here. And you can see what I've got right here is just a quarter inch wrench. That seems to be the easiest way. There's just no room for a bit ratchet or anything like that. Okay, that's perfect. All right, and then we need to tighten these right here. And it says that these are supposed to be torqued to 80 to 100 inch pounds. They do say to not use power tools when installing these kits. I think the main reason is they don't want you to strip out these security bits. All right, the next one here on this little side bracket. And we'll just tighten that one. I'm just using a 12 millimeter shallow socket with an extension just to make that nice and snug. All right, now we need to tighten the subframe bolt here. And I'm using a torque wrench here because we need to torque this to 63 foot pounds. We need to tighten this one here with that same security bit. But I noticed that they do give a warning on over tightening this. I'm pretty sure that those have probably sheared off when people have done this. Just make sure that you're not gonna break these off. All right. All right, then this splash shield right here, they give you a little riveted nut plate right here to go over this. You know what? I'm gonna put some thread locker on there too. It'll probably help prevent this from coming loose and snug this back down. Just by hand is all you're doing and that'll hold that in place. All right, then we need to put these splash shield bolts back in. These are both the 10 millimeter bolts that we took out. All right, last thing we need to do is put the factory heat shield back on. Okay, I'm just gonna get these two started here in the front. Those are the little 10 millimeter screws. And just press those little plastic clips back in. And then the last one right here. Well, that's it, we're done. That's the install complete. That actually went really well. The only thing that when I pulled this shield down, this rear part of the plastic shield actually came beyond the front piece. So when I put it back up, I had to tuck that up underneath. Other than that, everything worked great. Looks great, feels great. It's nice and solid. And you can tell that that's gonna be a lot more work for someone to try to cut that off and take it away because it's fastened up above. And even if they did cut the pipe here, they'd have a really hard time getting that out. You know, again, the idea behind these is it's really just a deterrent. Nothing is gonna be 100% theft proof. I think if a potential thief is to look underneath here and see that, that in itself is gonna be quite the deterrent. Now, I just wanna say thank you to MillerCat for sending this to me. This was sent to me in exchange for the installation video. Now, they were also kind enough to give me a coupon code for my viewers, so I'm gonna put that here in the description for you and also here on screen. This is the fifth shield that I've installed, and so far I've been very impressed with their products. This is a really nice, heavy-duty shield. This would definitely take someone a lot longer to cut through with a Sawzall or whatever it is that they're using. I just wish that this catalytic 
catalytic converter theft epidemic would stop, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to. It just seems like every time you turn around, you hear about somebody else that's got their catalytic converter stolen. If this did already happen to you, if your catalytic converter was stolen, I'm very sorry. I know it's terrible. It's one of the worst things to go out and start your car. You know, it sounds as loud as a big Harley motorcycle, you know, open exhaust. It's super loud and uh, it can startle you. More importantly, you just feel terrible. You feel violated. It's so deflating if that's happened to you. So I am very sorry if it did happen to you and that's why you're watching this video. If it hasn't happened to you yet and you still have your OEM catalytic converter, I would recommend you protect it. I would definitely recommend MillerCat. They've been a great company to work with and the products have all been great and they have really good customer service and support as well. If you have any issues with anything, you can reach out. They're very quick to respond. By the way, these are made in the USA if that's important to you. Definitely would recommend you pick one of these up. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. Now, of course, I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up this exact same catalytic converter shield for your car as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck. Bye.